everybody. Sorry to keep you from uh, taking your well-deserved lunch break after I have sneaked in for a while. Very informative uh, presentation from uh, from Mark, uh, and having had a, a legacy in 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 ink companies as well myself, uh, was great to to see the the different things again. Um, let me start with a little of, little bit of uh, fun facts. Today is Groundhog Day. Did everybody know this? Um, I'm saying this because uh, in Groundhog Day, the sunlight plays a big role. If uh, you can see, if the groundhog can see his shadow, he will go back into his cave and sleep for another six weeks uh, because uh, he expects the winter to last another six weeks. If he can see the light, um uh, that that means he's got a shadow we do uh, make use of light and that first does make use of light that first stands for advanced photonic technologies and um, if there is a shadow obviously uh, there is a light and that's what we're good at and that's what we master when we talk about drying at the speed of light um, our technology, and uh, I have seen in the audience some of the participants do already know us and use our technology. Thank you very much. Um, our technology is used in, uh, in a variety of different applications. And uh, if I look at from the right to the left, if you permit, uh, it's used in industrial applications for plastic deforming uh, and melting uh, in automotive industry for coatings, uh, for battery coating um, applications, solar panels. Uh, I've seen solar panels, uh, panel participants in here. Uh, there is uh, quite a few research going on with the very high intensity uh, light energy that Atfos is uh, emitting for producing highly effective solar panels uh, with uh, with a very with an excessive um, energy uh, efficiency. Um, in steel, we have uh, a big number of applications with this big steel uh, companies and coal coating and steel treatment. Uh, but obviously, for today, we'll be looking into uh, digital printing, mainly digital printing. Uh, we have a glimpse into printed electronics as well as in uh, uh, mailer dryers, power cubes, uh, etc. And um, I will start with a little bit of an overview of um, who our partners and customers are. And we consider partners companies, uh, like you can see on the top left, Actega, Sigwerk, uh, some chemical, uh, the ink companies where we do joint developments. Uh, we do see cooperative development of technology as a, as a very essential part. And I heard uh, Mark mentioning several times, that's the Atfos part and it's, uh, uh, it's the, the curing and the drying uh, where Atfos has a particular uh, offering for the uh, for the inkjet technology, and um, this has been uh, demonstrated and proven, uh, I would say, uh, in a in a white paper. Um, you can see in the uh, in, in, in the blue letters here. Uh, a downloadable white paper from a company that has made a comparison on this very printer that you can see in the background, the T400 series from Hewlett Packard, in comparison uh, with um, this printer with a standard dryer and the same printer with a booster from Atfos, where depending on the application, the productivity has uh, gone up by more than 50%. Uh, in some cases. And uh, we do make dryers uh, for, in this case, we call them booster or call them retrofit to improve the productivity. But we also do make dryers for uh, the same company, Hewlett Packard in this case, T1100, uh, where we um, equip the printer um, from the very start. This printer is no longer sold without an Atfos dryer in the primer station and in the printing station as well in the post-treatment uh, and the overprint varnish uh, station. Um, and it has been selected due to its productivity. And no, no other dryer was capable of drying that amount of water on such a small uh, space uh, without um, increasing the length of the printer significantly. Another example where a similar concept has been chosen, in this case, uh, two dryers were selected for the colors, one for the primer and one for the overprint, uh, overcoat varnish. Um, 
this uh, Coro jet from Koenig & Bauer has just recently, a couple of weeks ago, been launched to the market after a, a successful beta phase with one of the corrugated board printing companies in Germany. And it's uh, quite unique in its productivity uh, with 6,000 boards per hour uh, with 1200 by 1200 DPI resolution. And um, again, the drying is done in, in several steps and you don't even see the dryer in this very compact printer design, which is uh, again, uh, one of the outstanding features of the Upforce dryer. It's small uh, and very efficient. Um, our dryers are used in, are used in uh, many different applications, this one being a wallpaper printer um, with a water-based ink type from um, uh, the, the, the installation was made from industrial inkjet and it, uh, it stands in Cambridge, UK. Um, companies like Chefla in Italy have used our dryers on a shuttle uh, of a, of a multi-pass printer uh, and you can see them if you can see my my mouse on the left and the right of the shuttle. And uh, in this case, we are printing on quite an uncommon substrate, uh, it is glass. And uh, it is using uh, white as an additional color. Uh, and we do dry the ink immediately after it's been jetting onto the glass to avoid the bleeding, to fix it immediately and uh, have, a, have a high resolution uh, even on glass. An example I'm picking up from what Mark said uh, basically 10 minutes ago, UV hybrid, as it has been uh, built by the company Durst in Austria. Um, this is a printer also uh, with a shuttle uh, concept. And uh, also on this uh, shuttle, we have a dryer left and right. Um, that uh, printhead jets a UV water-based hybrid. We're drying the water um, before the board then passes through um, a, a full width size uh, UV lamp um, to, to cure the uh, photo initiators of the, um, of the UV components uh, of the ink. Uh, also here it's important to dry uh, very fast after the application of the ink. That's why Atros was selected because we can get very close to the printheads without taking a risk of premature drying of the ink in the printheads. Um, Ion, also an Austrian company, has selected us uh, in, a, in a similar application. Uh, here they use a water-based ink uh, with uh, up to eight colors. We use a little bit more powerful dryer here than um, it was necessarily on the Durst. Here we have uh, more emitters and a little bit bigger um, dryers, but you can see the modules are still very compact and are flanged on the side of the, um, of the shuttle for immediate drying um, of the water-based ink. Again, you see the advantages of um, uh, avoiding and reducing the bleeding effect um, and, uh, and, and keeping the ink on the surface, which was one of the key um, components. This is how this dryer looks like. We call it 96250E. And it's a very simple nomenclature. E stands for exhaust and 96 by 250 is the irradiated area. NIR for near infrared, uh, which is the, the, the wavelengths that we use in our dryers. And the same dryer has been used in the most recent uh, launch of Collodyne. Um, end of last year, they um, made quite a big uh, publication about this. Colodyne has uh, taken an, a Mark Andy frame uh, with a flexor unit. Uh, they added a UV um, inkjet print unit with Kyocera print heads, and they added uh, a water-based um, inkjet unit, uh, eight and a half inch uh, wide or 200, uh, almost 250 millimeters with Memjet technology. And uh, you can see the, the dryer we had just seen in the picture before here has been integrated at two spots, one as an interstation dryer, one as an end dryer. So the interstation dryers dries the CMY uh, when, it, uh, when it comes here. Afterwards, Collodyne jets the black ink and we have a second dryer that uh, dries the black and does the final cure to the CMY ink set that's been jetted before. So this concept of uh, two dryers for uh, CMYK, you've seen in the Corajet, you're seeing here, 
it is becoming more popular as the speed of application goes up and as the energy efficient plays a bigger role. Energy efficiency is, is key uh, in new installations these days and um, we have uh, found a good solution positioning them this way. This is an installation that I, uh, I really like for its compact uh, design. This printer does print with 300 meters per minute in 1200 by 1200 DPI resolution. It's using Samba print heads and it has two print bars per color. And every print bar is followed by one of our adverse dryers. So you see two dryers for yellow, two dryers for magenta, two dryers for cyan and two dryers for black. And this uh, interstation drying concept uh, is suitable of completely drying the ink jetted at 300 meter per minute speed on a one meter 60 wide web here. Um, again, you see the benefits of immediately evaporating the water uh, ink stays on the surface, uh, ink would not bleed. You have a wet and dry uh, print rather than a wet and wet and improve the, um, um, the, uh, the print quality, the resolution and the appearance uh, in, in this kind of concept. And again, on a very small space for such a powerful and fast uh, print. Same concept with the interstation drying is used in uh, printing on plastic films. Um, plastics, are depending on how thick they are and what material they are, but they can be really temperature sensitive. And so you want to maintain a very low uh, surface temperature, a very low substrate temperature. And uh, in this case, we have a temperature controlled drum uh, in the middle. Um, you can say cooling drum, it's not necessarily always cooling, but uh, basically it does control the temperature of the material. And we do apply the same concept again with the interstation dryers, the yellow first and the black uh, last. And this is bound into a concept where Corona prime uh, or primer coating can be done as a first step, um, inkjet white, CMYK, another white plus overcoat, et cetera. And that's how this could look like in practice. This is over um, uh, a flat web, not over um, a cylinder. Uh, but this is how a small version of, a, of an interstation drying could look like. So um, these examples lead us to why are those companies, those often market leading companies, uh, choose that first technology. And um, the, the answers are um, basically summarized here. We do improve the print quality. Uh, with a fast drying with the reduction of um, um, bleeding uh, either on a closed surface or into a porous surface, both have uh, positive impacts. Uh, we create a better adhesion to stock. Um, we can reduce uh, the ink consumption, and that's been um, uh, proven in another study. Ink consumption can be reduced by between 10 and 20 percent simply because we're holding the dye uh, or the pigment on the surface rather than having it penetrated into a porous substrate. Um, we can increase the stock range. Um, sensitive stocks can um, be used uh, because of this immediate drying effect. Less damage to substrate occurs if you have less swelling, uh, you have lower shrink shrinkage, and you can retain the uh, natural substrate uh, moisture equilibrium. equilibrium. And uh, the other aspect is uh, the lower energy consumption. And um, depending on how much time we have, uh, we can have a look at why that is. But we do use, uh, we do condense the, um, the light energy in a way um, that uh, it dries much more effectively than um, warm air or mid-wave infrared uh, drying technologies. And also we use the instant switching on and off. Uh, you can use our, our dryers like, um, like a light switch. When you need it, you put it on. If you don't need it, you put it off. You have no warm up time. You have no standby consumption of any energy, et cetera. Um, overall, the production costs can be reduced and um, a, a much, a, a, an argument that gets more and more important these days is uh, the reduced in the reduction in carbon footprint and the reduction in CO2 emissions because we use uh, electrical energy. And uh, if that energy is generated by renewable resources, it's completely CO2 free. 
but you can consider um, if we calculate kilowatt against kilowatt from warm air in a gas oven compared to ATFOS uh, NIR, the radiation, uh, we are uh, factors of three to six more efficient. Yeah, so you need uh, about one sixth of the energy of the number of kilowatts compared to warming up uh, air with gas. And uh, in a nutshell, NIR scientifically is identified and defined as being uh, between 0.8 and 1.5 micron wavelength. ATFOS clearly only uses in the, the sub micron uh, range between uh, 820 uh, and more or less 900 uh, nanometers wavelength. And this is um, the NIR light that you can see coming from our uh, modules. Infrared has a, has a meaning. Infrared is, is very good in many applications where it's about warming up the surface as much as uh, evaporating. Uh, but uh, the big difference between the long wave infrared and the NIR wavelength is uh, that we do not or very rarely uh, heat up the surface. Uh, but we incite the polar molecules to evaporate very fast. And that, with a very high energy density, which you can see on the curve in the NIR wavelength, uh, we can condense in the environment of two to two and a half megawatt per square meter. Um, I'm running over to um, what is curing, what is drying. Uh, we don't consider UV radiation a drying effect. It's a it's a cross-linking effect, it's a chemical reaction, uh, so we don't really compare it. Uh, but an important comparison between um, other drying technologies on the right and near-infrared is that most substrates and also uh, uh, all coatings basically are transient to our irradiation. So our irradiation passes through the whole uh, printed layer to the substrate, sometimes through the substrate, and it can be reflected uh, and returned and reused. So we have, can achieve a very homogeneous drying at the same time as uh, keeping the substrate cool um, and um, causing the evaporation um, only where uh, the, the polar components, where the liquid components are. And compared to a microwave and, um, and, and warm air, or consider a toaster being a kind of an infrared dryer as well. Um, what, what NIR does is um, inciting the, molar, the polar molecules to react immediately to our uh, wavelength. The friction makes them evaporate um, at the speed of light, as mentioned before. And um, all the non-polar molecules, which are in paper film, um, most of the substrate, they react very slowly to NIR. So whilst a black pigment ink absorbs about 95% of our energy, a paper only absorbs about 5% of our energy. And um, a, a plastic film can be as low as only 1% of our energy absorption. So it does not react to the energy, uh, which you can compare uh, with the microwave concept. Um, as you put a mug of water into a microwave, um, it, the water gets hot, the mug stays cool. So that's a, a basic introduction to our technology. This is how our modules could look like uh, with the irradiation in the middle and the warm air ventilation. And this should be um, the, the final uh, technology part of my presentation, the warm air ventilation is an extremely important part of what we do. Uh, we evaporate the water with the um, emitters, with the NIR emitters here in the middle of the module. We do blow uh, air, warm air, uh, against the web direction to break the, the, the boundary layer, to break the steam and uh, create a turbulence. And on the other side of the module, we uh, exhaust the, the humid air to, um, to create the drying effect um, on, the, um, uh, on the substrate. We could go into much more details and theories, um, but um, I think everybody knows how to reach us. Uh, James and I are part of this conference. We can be reached by chats, uh, both on, on LinkedIn and via our email addresses as well. Um, thank you for your attention so far.